The Marathon Jumbo Day Date Automatic Watch is one of my favorite all-time automatic watches. You can see it in several of my videos on my channel. One thing that's always bothered me though is trying to get the time exactly perfect, which is almost impossible on an automatic watch. But in this video, I'm gonna share with you how I got it pretty darn close, almost perfect. If this is something that interests you, please come along for the ride. Greetings everyone, I hope you're having a super fantastic day. Welcome back to the channel and welcome if it's your first time here, the Jumbo Day Date from Marathon. One of my all time favorite automatic watches. Absolutely love this watch. However, it's been frustrating trying to get the time to be really close to exact. Now with automatic watches, you're always gonna have a little bit of a plus and minus. Everyone knows that going in. Some run perfect, I know they're out there. And I wanted to get this one as close as I could to the time here that's on the phone or the digital time, whatever you want to call that. So I'm going to show you how I did that. And by the way, we're sitting here right now at 48 hours after, um, after my last adjustment. So we're at 48 hours. So let's take a quick look here. We are almost perfect. Uh, it's really, really close, and I'd rather err on the side of plus. In other words, I'd rather have it running just a tiny bit fast. It's just easier to adjust if you're, you know, a little bit on the weird side like me and you like to have things running perfect. And I know perfect is something that's impossible to attain. So let me show you how I did it. Let's move this out of the way for now. And some of the things that I used... Now on the Marathon Jumbo Day Date, we've got a screw back case. So you'll need some kind of a tool. I picked this up at a local um, craft type store here in my hometown. You could pick this up on Amazon if this is something that you're looking for. I don't know what it's called, case back remover or something like that. And it fits, you can adjust it. Here the screw you is kind of widen and narrow and, and this thing here turns. I don't want to move anything because it's adjusted right now to this watch. So I'll show you what I did. First, I took everything apart. I took these spring bars out and the straps. I'm going to talk about these straps and bracelets here at the very end of this video. And we'll put it all together. So stick around with me if you like. So what I did was I used this here tool. And I was very careful not to scratch. And right now it's still loose because I wanted to show you how I did this. I didn't want it to go back to super tight yet. And I unscrewed the back. There are special tools out there for all of this. Let's put that down there for now. On this one here, there is a, looks like some kind of a, corrugated spring of some kind. I'm thinking it's putting tension on the innards. I'm not a watchmaker or anything like that. I'm just a guy who likes to, to fix things himself. This might be for some of you that are like me. Okay, so let's take this and put this aside for now too. Let's bring it in nice and close. I was really intimidated when I first looked at this because I'd never seen anything like this before. And you can see the movement is moving there. Let's see if I can't get the light on it just right. There it is right there, sorry. And we can hear it. Okay, so what I did was you can see a uh, I'll get a little pointer here. I got a toothpick, which I did actually use for this. You can see a minus and a plus. And there's a little lever right here. You can see a little lever. So what I did when I first started doing this was I moved the leader, the leader, I moved the lever um, to the right, which I thought was adding speed, making it faster, and I was correct. The more I went to the right, to the plus, 
the faster the movement went and vice versa. It took me at least 25 attempts because the adjustment is so micro, so, I mean, if you move this thing just ever so slightly, it makes a huge difference. And then of course you gotta wait 24 hours to find out exactly how much you're plus or minus. So that's what I did. And I used a toothpick, not this one, maybe it wasn't this one, this is a broken one. And what I also did was I unscrewed the crown pulled the movement or pulled the crown all the way out so that the movement stopped. Uh, the last thing I wanted to do is take a, a chance and accidentally, you know, drop into that movement there. That would probably be bad. So then I pushed the crown back in, tightened it back up, screwed the um, crown or screwed the case back on. And let's see if I can do this here behind the camera. Cross-threading cross, cross is a bad thing, and some you can tell right away if it's cross-thread. Now, the reason why I'm holding it upside down, I'll zoom back out. The reason why I'm holding it like this is so that that, that corrugated um, round thing stays in the middle. When I first tried doing this, I tried doing it from this position, and it was moving around, and I find that it's, it's seated much better. So I've got the case back on, it's finger tight only. And assuming that I made an adjustment, I would just put it down, lie it down on flat. Of course, make it was make sure that it was wound and I would just monitor it. And it took a long time. Like I said, it took many adjustments and several, several days because I don't have the right tools. Now, if you're a watchmaker and a professional jeweler and all that, you're probably laughing at this video but I don't have any of that stuff. So that's how I did it. And a lot of us who own these uh, probably will just send them in, but they never come in perfect. And um, at least I've never had one come back to the adjustment that I have now. Again, no special tools, just that one device over there. All right, so that's where we're at. That's exactly how I did it. Nothing special, a lot of caution. And let's see where we're at. We should still be running pretty good. You can see that it's not that bad. We're 48 hours in. I'm okay with that. Just a tad, maybe a hair fast. So I'm okay with that. So let's... Um, Let's tighten the back up and let's put on some strap of some kind. This is the original Marathon stainless steel bracelet. You can see that I wear it a lot. I'm going to give this one a break. This is the Zulu strap that I've been wearing quite a bit lately too with the Marathon uh, compass and a thermometer. I'm going to give this one a break too. I'm gonna put on this isofrain, and this is actually a 22, I think, a 22 millimeter uh, strap. And the lug to lug on the JDD is 20, if I'm not mistaken. And you can see here, I gotta give it a, just a tiny bit of a compression. And try to do this behind the camera. You can see it there. I'll try to zoom in. Oops. Let's try to do that again. There you go. It's compressed just ever so slightly and it really doesn't bother me at all. This is actually for another watch. So I would have to get another one. These are too expensive to do that. So I'm going to do the ghetto version which works just fine. 120 clicks, set it back. Let's bring over this tool again. Now there's another little trick that I did here because I don't have a, a clamp or whatever it is, a vise that a watch sits in so they can do this properly. So what I've been doing is I've been putting in an upside down, again, ghetto version, and it does work. 
and I get it here. The bar here is sticking over the workbench. And I know I want to turn it this way. And of course this wants to go. So all I do is put my knee against this and then just gently tighten it here. I'm going to do that on camera for you. Not going to be easy without moving everything. I might have to move this just a little bit more. All right, let's try that. Okay, right now I can feel the threads tightening up. And I'm putting pressure on the actual case of the watch, not on the crown. And I'm gently pushing down at the same time. And I think I'm satisfied with that. Move that out of the way. Let's bring over these spring bars. Both spring bars are locked in. That took forever. And you can see here with the tensioning, you can almost adjust it to where you want before you put it on. I like to have it in this position. And we'll put it on wrist. Now this is a seven and a quarter inch wrist. If you're wondering, it's a very funny shaped wrist. We're all unique. This one has a really lovely vanilla smell. And there you have it. The JDD is on the black ISO frame. Let's see how we're doing. Probably not going to notice much difference here. Not bad. I hope you found value in this video. In the meantime, let's talk to you very soon. Bye for now.